This air compressor is an old hand-me-down compressor from one of my very good friends. But the only problem is I used it for a little while and now the compressor is completely locked up. The motor seems to work fine. The tank doesn't leak, but the air pump located right here does not work anymore. So I've got a solution for this thing and hopefully we can rebuild this thing and bring it back to life. You can find used compressors like this for sale all over the place for around a hundred bucks. And if you can get one like that that needs rebuilt, you can make this thing worth your while because let's face it, compressors nowadays are crazy prices. I really want to rebuild this thing as cheap as possible, but at the same time, I want to use readily available parts. So I went to my local Harbor Freight, grabbed decent size air pump. This isn't the biggest one they make, but it's definitely not the smallest. So this is going to be a 5.3 CFM at 90 PSI, two horsepower, and it's a V style. So it's very similar to this. It's got the two pistons in it, but it's just a little bit different shape. And I think it's gonna work on here just fine. We're gonna have to change this configuration a little bit, but this should do the trick. We'll have to order some parts, which I'll explain here in a second. First thing I wanna do is get this thing apart and then get it pressure washed because it's just absolutely gross. This compressor oil has been basically dripping or spraying on this thing its whole entire life. Thing we need to do on this thing is take off this whole contraption up here at the top. I put some Harbor Freight filters on this at some point. This is the filter that was already on it. Probably better being in the trash at this point. But I want to take this apart and at least open it here and maybe there. I thought there was a bigger, yeah, there's a couple bigger openings right there and right there. So I will be able to fill this with some sort of cleaner like Simple Green or purple power and uh, pressure wash it out because I'm afraid that there is still some gross water at the bottom of this thing. So I'll go ahead and do that and then we will start to work on the top of this thing and put the new parts on it. Now that the tank is completely clean, we can start putting this thing back together and hope for the best here. So I found this manifold online. It came with the pressure switch and manifold together. I think it was like around 30 bucks. Came with some fittings, I think like a pressure relief valve. I needed some brass pipe here, which is going to be a lot cleaner than the black iron pipe that was on here before. This manifold I found on Amazon. I'll link it down below with the switch. I was gonna try to build one of these out of brass fittings, but it was gonna cost over a hundred bucks. So I found one of these and figured this will be a lot easier to do. And uh, it all comes in one kit. So let's slap it together. This is definitely the part I'm most excited for. Hopefully it fits. It doesn't, it doesn't fit. Wonder if we can put a spacer on it or something. Oh my God. You gotta be kidding me. That's something. Maybe what I'll do is put this out of 90, go backwards with it so this is out of the way, which means I need to go back to the hardware store. After about what seemed like a hundred trips to Home Depot, I think I've got all the fittings to make this work. It's a little overcomplicated because I bought half inch copper hard line to run from here. It's gonna have to loop around and then go in here. Then that goes to a check valve right here. And then we have a blow off valve that goes from here to the um, shut off pressure switch, out of the tank to the pressure switch, which will be wired into the motor Everything's ready to go. I've got some copper hard line to run from the pump to the tank here, which hits the check valve first, and then we can mount the motor. Everything is clear. I think this is where the pump is gonna sit. This gets a little bit close. If I need to, I can angle it or twist it this way. The motor will sit right here. Let me go grab it. Oh yeah, it's gonna be close. I guess we'll have to angle it like that a little bit. So, 
that is where the original holes are on the compressor to mount the motor. So we are in business there. This looks like it's gonna have to move back to about there if needed. We've got plenty of room here, plenty of room here. Gotta run some hard lines. And then I have to mess with the pulleys, which we'll do in just a second. thing that's holding me back is the hard line from here to here but I want to figure out where the pump is gonna sit in regards to the pulley on the motor very first so I want to mount the motor I'll mount it kind of loose and then I'll be able to position this wherever it needs to go and then we'll be able to measure for the belt and then get it together Cleaned it up with a wire brush and check this out. Slides right on. It's all the way to the end. Now we can tighten the set screws and then mount this thing and mount the pump and get it going. Taking a straight edge and lining it up with this pulley can help you line it up with the pulley on the motor. And then we can mark where our new holes need to be drilled. So we'll drill these holes, mount this thing, measure for our belt, and then we can put it together. While I'm waiting for the belt in the mail, because that's the last thing I need for this thing, I was trying to button everything else up and I forgot that this pipe down here broke off inside the fitting. So I wanted to show you guys this nifty little tool I found. They sell these at hardware stores, but it's a wrench that goes inside the pipe and it kind of spins and grabs on. So you can see, we can actually pull this broken piece of pipe out. All right, this is the moment of truth for this belt. It looks like it's gonna fit in the groove there. And I ordered 49 inch belt. So we'll see if that's gonna do it for this. That's what the website told us. Looks like it's gonna be tight, but oh, that wasn't bad. Now we'll do this. Oh yeah. Oh, that's perfect. Got oil in the pump, wired to 220. All right, the breaker is flipped to on. Wanna stay back from here. We'll see if it's going the right direction. Whoa, I guess it didn't work. Was that the pressure switch or was that the motor? I'm a little nervous. There's definitely smoke coming from the motor. Wow, okay. When the old motor blew up, I knew I either had to get the wallet out and buy a full new compressor, which I really didn't want to do, especially after throwing all kinds of brand new parts at the old one. So I turned to Viver here for my first time ever, and they actually sent this to me in two days within ordering one. I couldn't believe how quick it was. Hopefully, the mounting holes are exactly the same too, and this should be pretty straightforward and quick. I'm excited to get this thing on there, and we'll have a brand new compressor after this. Let's test this thing and make sure it actually works. I can't even explain how excited I am that this thing actually 
worked and didn't explode like the last one. The motor is mounted. It's still wired temporarily, not to a pressure switch. And uh, the fitting on this side is open, so it will not build pressure right now. You need to run the air pump for 30 minutes with no load, so no pressure can build in the tank. And this motor is set up to run counterclockwise, so it's already spinning the correct direction, which is this way right here. If you need to switch directions on this, it's just two wires in the back that you switch. Super easy and it's on the instructions. Anyway, this thing should be ready to go. The belt seems tight enough, but we might need to get it tighter. Um, I wanna see what happens. Let this thing run for a little while with no load in the tank and get this thing broken in so we can get it ready to paint my truck. Let's do it. The belt is under a lot more tension. It still moves a little bit. I don't know if it's just because of the length of it or anything like that, but this thing seems to run absolutely great. So I wanna put this to the test and build some pressure and make sure the pressure switch actually turns it off. Now this is also my first time soldering copper pipe, so we're bound to have some leaks to say the least. But let's flip this thing on, see if we can build some pressure and see how this thing works compared to the old unit that locked up on me and didn't build any pressure anymore. So we've got 120 PSI in here, but I don't know how pressure switch works should be cutting off right around 120, which I'm sure is why we got this going on. But right now, I don't hear any leaks, which is cool. I guess I need to figure out this pressure switch. There must be an, a way to adjust it so it cuts off around 4 or 120 before that happens. Huge shout out to Viver here for the motor they sent me in literally two days. Two days, I got the motor to rebuild this thing. They're like 140 bucks online. That is a killer deal compared to any other motor. Works just fine, just like any other compressor motor. And then the old Harbor Freight air pump seemed to pump up to 120 pretty quickly and we're holding air pressure and all that. So this is an amazing deal. If you can find a tank for cheap, which usually they're pretty cheap on Marketplace, and then put it together yourself, it's really not that bad. Make sure you check all the links in the description for the motor and any of the parts that I used here, and we'll catch you in the next one. Whoa!